Hi, this is Misha. And, uh, folks seem to like the first Battlestar Galactica Eagle Moss ship thing I kind of looked at. So I thought I'd look at another one. Here's another Cylon. This is the Raider. Standard fighter craft of the machine folk from the re imagined, re envisioned series. Looks quite different from the original, which was kind of a small flying saucer ish thing. This is also one of the biggest. Eagle Moss models that I know of. It's pretty flat though. It has a very uh, kind of crab design to it. Crab people. Interesting story in this uh, since the battle, the new Battlestar Galactica and the original really didn't have a ton of ships in either one. They really were able to flesh them out and give them some uh, kind of backstory and characteristics. The story behind the Raider, it is uh, biomechanical. Basically, it's organic. It's grown from an animal. It's indicated that it's kind of like a pet. It has intelligence. It has a brain. But it also has computer systems, as evidenced by the fact that it's able to deliver the computer virus. has three engines in the back, which are reminiscent of uh, colonial ships like the Viper. It has two large cannon here. It also can carry nuclear missiles, as well as standard smaller missiles. I'm not actually sure what these sweepy things are. I mean, it gives it that organic look, and I know, you know, in real world, that's the reason, but in universe, I'm not sure what those are. Kind of wings, but honestly, with that, it did have a much slimmer profile. Obviously, it can support a human, because uh, Starbuck captured one and ripped out its head, basically, and flew it back, so it does have some support for other organisms, although it is autonomous by its nature. There's also the Heavy Raider, which does have a physical pilot and a crew transport capability, and I do hope Eagle Moss does make a model of the Heavy Raider. I think that would be cool. Much like the human form Cylons and Presumably, maybe even the robotic centurions. The raiders could they could sorry guys, just trying to get this thing. They could resurrect. Now since resurrection technology was new to the Cylons when the uh, five came from old Earth, we can presume that in the first Cylon war, the original raiders, or the centurions in them, were not capable of any type of resurrection. This is important for a fighter craft, because it meant that when it was destroyed, it was reborn, had learned from its mistakes, and could keep coming back and back, becoming better and better and better. Whereas, like a human pilot, once they're, they're dead, we're, we're dead. This kind of made up for the uh, animal or kind of computer instincts, which... Otherwise, a human pilot could maybe uh, more easily overcome. It's a little bit larger than a Viper, but it also has jump, jump capability. Actually, it's quite an efficient jump drive. It seems like it's about ten times more efficient than most Colonials. And the Colonial Viper can't even jump in general, so it's more analogous to, say, a, a Raptor. But it has some shortcomings as well. Otherwise, uh, yeah. Wouldn't stand much of a chance. The Raider is the primary defense for a base star or base ship. 
so it's more powerful but once these are destroyed a base ship is much more vulnerable than a battle star would be likewise if their support craft are destroyed raiders become more vulnerable or if they're outside the range of the resurrection ship as evidenced by the so-called scar in that one episode, which I'm not terribly great with episode titles, but we did have an episode about Scar, a particularly aggressive raider. I thought this was a neat model. It's definitely different, different design. It's interesting that the robots use organic ships, and the, the organic humans use kind of machine ships, like the Viper. And that was obviously done intentionally. Final point... It's actually the raiders that in a very direct way led to the Ceylon Civil War. These, a raider refused to fire on a colonial viper, which led to some of the Cylons trying to so-called lobotomize them, basically reset their programming, take out some of their free will. Other of the human form Cylons objected. Uh, shenanigans ensued with... All kinds of shooting and bang bang and stuff. And hey, the guy from Quantum Leap was there. And he was kind of weird because he kind of wanted to screw his own daughter. Sort of, kind of. Hey, it was definitely more of an adult show. Uh, yeah, so if you wanted to do a dark sci-fi series, uh, the re-envisioned, the re-imagined Battlestar did it right. And um, as it should because, I mean, even if things are okay on the Battlestar, or even in the fleet, which often they weren't, your whole civilization has been destroyed. I mean, that always has to be in the back of your mind, you know? Everyone lost loved ones, multiples, so... Even in the end, the Cylons kind of lost, because they went into a civil war, the Centurions did their thing with some of the thing, yeah, back and forth. Very good series. Back in the day, everyone I knew watched it, but if you haven't, you definitely should. It is worth checking out. And it didn't go on too long. It had four seasons plus a miniseries to introduce it. And then it had a couple of movies like Razor. Just about the right interval so you weren't bored. It kind of left you wanting more a bit. And I know it's not the most popular opinion online, but I thought the final episode was actually quite good. I don't really know how they could have ended it much better. And for once, they gave it some happy notes, which was a refreshing change for that series. So, yeah. Eagle Mosses, Cylon, Raider. Well, hope you enjoyed this. Feel free to comment below, like, share, subscribe. And also, you can check out some other kind of impromptu reviews and discussions of in-universe sci-fi things. Appreciate you tuning in. This is Misha, and I will catch you next time.